right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Royal News Network Saturday morning live stream, although it is afternoon where I am. I'm currently in London, so so excited to be back here doing these weekly Saturday morning live streams. We took a little bit of a break just because of like travel preparations, end of summer and everything. And oftentimes things in the royal sphere slow down, but we've had a very, very busy September in royal land. So I'm so excited that you guys are here. So we have Bella. Hello. A greetings from Australia. Oh, it's very early in the morning there. We also have Sharon. Good morning. It's back. Good to be back. I'm looking forward to the live chat. Yes. We have Sean as well. I am ecstatic. Awesome. And we also have Anne. Good morning from Olympia. Autumnal rains do all week to dampen forest fires. Well, that's good. We also have, uh, we have Sean here. Good morning from the UK. And we have some members here. Becky, good morning. Ready for some royal fun. Good morning, Brittany. We also have Lori. Good morning, everyone. Then I saw at least one other. Um, smile, good morning. Still in bed, LOL. Brittany is back. My only request is no linking of anything Megan wears. Exactly what she wants and needs to fail every turn. Hey, now, <laughs> I did just go ahead and do that just because I did a fashion video reviewing all of Megan's fashion looks. And I just thought, well, I like sometimes her individual pieces, but not everything. So we also have Sarah. Good morning. And then we have Emily, another member, Hong Kong. We also have John. Thank you so much for the super sticker, John. You are fabulous. I so appreciate it. This, I keep saying this morning and it feels like morning yet. It's been a busy day. Um, I went to spend some time trying to look for some items, uh, down on bond street, which was fun. Um, went to LK Bennett, one of Catherine's favorite places. So um, I was hoping to get a pair of shoes, but they didn't have the ones I wanted. And another place had them, but they were, uh, what, are, what were they? They were like the display ones. I'm like, unless you're going to give me a discount, I don't want to, because I'm preparing for a video, but I think I may go a different direction. And then we also have, let's see here, go back up to the top and chat with everyone. We have Evelyn. Good morning from Sicily. Oh, Sicily. Oh, that sounds marvelous. We also have Lucy, hello from Australia. And we have Martin as well. Hi, all. Hope all is well. It feels like ages since we had a Saturday live stream. Looking forward to an awesome. And just as a reminder, if you guys haven't been to the Saturday morning live streams, obviously we've had a couple new people. If you have questions or things you want to discuss, go ahead and put them in like all caps. That helps me look for them. Um, and then we do also have another super sticker here from DizFan. Hello. Thank you so much for the super sticker this morning. I so appreciate it. And then we have, um, I want to say, Rube, Rube from Germany. Guten Tag. I was in Germany recently. It was a great, fabulous time. We have Mary Ruth. First time for me getting on beginning of a live. Awesome. So glad you are here, Mary Ruth. And we also have Tori. Just want to say I saw a picture of the Prince and Princess of Wales going to watch George in this game. Normal like any other family. Yes. And so that is a really... <clears throat> So we picture it's hard though because it's like I feel like it's invasive yet at the same time I also just love seeing them off duty I think that's that's a great thing to see so I have mixed feelings about it but I just did think they were very cute um so we do have um and curious about popcorn planets uh, our private chat with Jessica M and the first responder award that picked me up ridiculous yeah um I don't know I don't really follow popcorn planet so I'm not sure but that would have been very interesting we also have Tori good morning everyone from sunny Salt Lake City Utah um, it's been a long time and we have Gail here as well. So we have more people, but I'm going to go ahead and start going through and trying to find some questions. Uh, Smile says, I need to go get some hot chocolate on our Saturday morning lives. Yes. So um, I went to this place and got some, uh, it's like specialty, more specialty stuff. I'm not sure I like it, but it's okay. <laughs> um but I have had some good hot chocolate. I'm so excited, though, too. Mainland Europe still has Starbucks signature hot chocolate, which is better than the normal classic hot chocolate. So if you're ever in mainland Europe, it, you, you may see it. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and see here. I think I did see a question. Uh, Dawn asked, question, can King Charles seek um, rights to see Archie and Lilibet? Um, he may, because kind of the complicated thing, if you don't know, is that the Royals can technically like whoever is monarch can technically, technically has, um, some guardianship control over the children. Now, should Charles exercise that? No. Would it look bad for him? Yes. Yes, it would. And it just doesn't look good to interfere 
and something like this. It just really doesn't. Um, it doesn't benefit Charles. Like he'll get to see maybe his grandchildren more, but nobody likes the lawsuit. Um, you can even see this with the Sophie Turner and Joe Jonas divorce proceedings that are going on right now is that, um, you know, it's turned ugly. She's filed a lawsuit against him for interfering in custodial custody issues. None of that goes well. It doesn't play well to anyone really. I think to a certain extent it, it benefits her and it doesn't, and it doesn't benefit him. And it does like, it's all sorts of bad. So no, no, he would never exercise that. Um, and I don't think nor should he to be honest. Renski, warm wishes to you from Vietnam. Looking forward to the live. Thank you. We also have Catherine here, a member. Good morning from Rhode Island. And Lisa, hello from Carroll, um, Iowa, I believe. And we have Tiana here. Good morning, Brittany and everyone. And Babs, good morning from Perth. Ooh, that's early in the morning in Australia. It's, um, yeah, very early. Michelle H says, hi, I love your trip coverage. Why, thank you. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a very, very long trip. Um, kind of looking forward to, I just have like, I think four more full days and then I head home to see Miss Pippa, who I'm very excited to see, but it's also been a lot of fun, um, kind of retreading some old ground, seeing new things. And so that's always exciting. I think in so many ways, cause sometimes I've been here to places and it had been so long and it's just crazy. So, um, yeah, it's been super nice to kind of go back and looking forward to spending a little bit of time in Paris because it's been a long time and then getting some coverage of pictures and stuff of the tiaras in the Louvre and also in Versailles as well. And I'll probably do a whole video on some of the tiaras I've seen because they've been very impressive, especially in Munich. The ones in Munich are just like amazing and they, they lit them so well that they just really, really sparkle. It was awesome. Okay, so we had, I saw one here. Uh, Asma said, how did Heart of Invictus go? Well, I mean, it flopped. It, it definitely flopped. <laughs> it was never in the top 10 list. Um, and I know some people are like, well, it's not supposed to. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, it is. Ha Netflix is not paying them $100 million only to have one show ever show up in the top 10 list. They want every show in the top 10 list. That's why they're paying them $100 million. So um, do I think Netflix is waiting and running out their contract? Probably. And that's just my, my opinion. Um, and so, yeah, it's just, it bombed. I didn't think it was good. And I love documentaries. I just, I found it dull in a lot of places. I felt like it dragged. Sometimes it was good. Sometimes it wasn't. Um, it's just, yeah, just wasn't, wasn't great. And I'm not surprised that it didn't go well. Um, I know some people have said, oh, you know, they're still filming at the Invictus Games for Netflix. I'm like, no, no, Netflix isn't going to pay a dime for net more Invictus Games content. Didn't make them anything. Um, and I mean, obviously, Netflix is different because um, they don't they don't run on ads and stuff like that. So that makes it a little bit different. But you want new shows, whatever the new show is, you want that new show to increase subscribers. And I just don't think that happened at all. Babs, a member. Thank you so much for the super sticker as well this morning. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. And then we also have, I saw somebody I missed. We have Peggy. Good morning, Peggy, um, one of our members. And then we also have Sue here. Uh, any thoughts on Harry and Meghan appearing at Kevin Costner's charity event with Oprah? Um, I did film a quick video on this because I'm trying to, because I've been a little bit depleted of content this month. So I'm trying to, um, go out and do things and yet also push myself to get videos done. <laughs> so I did film one this morning. Um, I mean, it's, it's like typical, like they're still trying to make inroads. Um, but what's really strange is her constant need to mother him. Um, them getting, giving away those, those, um, awards is just, it's just cringy. It's just so cringy. Cause she, you know, she has to like, they're right there and she has to pick it up and give it to him and then push him towards whoever he's giving it to. And I'm like, he is a 39 year old man, honey. He, you don't need to like direct him uh, unless you do think he is a dim child. <laughs> thing I can think of. All right. Phyllis. Hello. Good morning from uh, Northwest Missouri. Um, Maria. Hi, Brittany. You're with us today. So good this afternoon. Yes, I am. Cindy for a member. Good morning. And we also have Catherine from Arizona. And then Alice, I miss these live streams. Just what I need right now. Good. I'm so glad. All right. So Lisa James asks, have you noticed the new PR push by the Herkles trying to get right back into the victim narrative? A little bit, but what I've noticed is a change is 
in particular, Megan's excessive um, fashion push. Like the Invictus Games was like dialed up to 11, even from last year. Like so many outfit changes, so many different, like more affordable brands. Last year was all very, very pricey designer pieces. This year it was more of a mix. So I think she's definitely gearing up for the relaunch of her influencer career. Cause you know, that scream success for, to go from influencer royalty back to influencer again. Um, so <laughs> this woman has not stepped up in the world at all. Really? Like really in a way. Um, cause she's right back where she started, which is unbelievably pathetic anyways. So, um, I don't think she's, they're trying to quite get back into the victim narrative, but I just don't even think they have any other narratives to play anymore like at this point um they they failed in everything in large respects uh now they need to produce results and they aren't doing it and just giving out random awards from time to time and showing up at charity events that ain't gonna make you money <laughs> you guys need to look you guys need to make money seriously um that's kind of how life goes mm. uh jotter says hey Brittany, you look lovely today well thank you um, we also have a la laners laners were your ears ringing yesterday you were discussing you were discussing on real housewives recap really i didn't know that <laughs> i've heard some people mention it and i i have not particularly watched it but if they did and they pulled me up awesome hopefully it was flattering <laughs> don't know. Hopefully it was. I hope it was. Um, and so we have Chris. Good morning. Glad to see you back on live stream. Why? Thank you. <laughs> Did you enjoy the preview of Megan's Halloween costume? This is from Lisa. I'm not sure. Was it the, like the, oh, like the weird big cape thing that made her look like she's 60 years old? Maybe. I mean, there's just like, I think there's a way to style something like that. But when I saw that, I was just like, oh, that seems so old. <laughs> so that's my thing. Uh, Christy says, are you enjoying our lovely UK? I am. I went to Windsor Castle yesterday, which was so fun. I did the Conquering the Tower tour. Um, they opened them up usually in the summer. They started doing that in, I think, 010. It's what they said, 2010. And so if you are interested, highly recommend. There's a, like about 200 steps. We get to go up to the top tower in Windsor Castle, and you get to look out. And unfortunately, unfortunately, you cannot take a picture. But you can actually see the London skyline from the top of this tower. You can see the London skyline. It was incredible. But because it overlooks the Royal Apartments, we couldn't take a picture of it. <sighs> so bummed but it was I I didn't realize you could see that that far but you could literally see like I was like looking and they're going okay those are like the you know skyscrapers I'm like is that London and he's like yeah I'm like okay <laughs> obviously you also saw a lot of planes from Heathrow airport I was also there um but um yeah it was a lot of fun we got um a great overlook of you know the 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 chapel um St. George's Chapel and then we also had we could see Eaton College so it was a really great um highly recommend if you're ever there and I got, got to see Her Majesty's tomb. Um, it's, it's interesting because it, it's very simple. I think it just says Elizabeth II and her date of birth and her date of death. But um, but yeah, it was really cool to be in there in St. George's Chapel. Um, it had been a little bit. I didn't tour the state rooms because I had done that last year. Did tour the state rooms of Buckingham Palace. So 100% worth it. If you've never done it, do it. Do it. If they open it up in the summer generally. You must do it. It is spectacular. And I've spent a lot of times in palaces this year. And it was one of like one of the most impressive things I've seen. Um, the the work on the ceiling, like the um, I think it's like sort of like a plaster work or whatever, magnificently done. Um, it's 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 like a lot, but it it, it works. And I because I've always thought to a certain extent with Buckingham Palace, because nobody wants to live there really, is that um, it's maybe kind of a dull place in a way. And I'm sure aspects of it are very underwhelming, but the state rooms are not, they are not underwhelming in the slightest. They are spectacular, highly, highly worth it. Okay. Bonnie from Texas was Megan's March with the veterans planned or impromptu. She certainly wasn't dressed for it. Um, so I don't know if it was planned or impromptu, but they were doing it with other people. Cause I do actually have a video of them doing it with somebody else. And so I know that they were doing it with whoever was presenting the awards because they did it with the same, this different person. So, but at the same time, like she was not dressed appropriately for that event in the slightest on any day, pretty much like, 
th- that would have been a great day to just wear all Invictus branded gear all the time. Like simple packing. I have a lot of um, Real News Network merch, especially because it was so stinking hot in Germany and Austria. It was in the mid 80s to 90s every single day. And so um, I didn't bring enough dresses and I didn't bring particularly like cold weather dresses <laughs> or no warm weather dresses. And because I was like looking forward to fall. So I had to dig into, um, I had to wear sweatpants a lot, which I don't normally do. Um, and I, I had a lot of Royal News Network shirts. And I actually had a shirt I bought from Neuschwanstein, Neuschwanstein, because I said Neuschweinstein. And Schwein sounds more like swine pig. So Schwan, just anyways, pronunciations, issues. Um, Neuschwanstein, I, I got a t-shirt there that I wore. This trip. So I've been wearing a lot of t-shirts, um, at least at the beginning I've changed up now because it's a bit cooler now. Thank goodness. I was like, so looking forward to like cooler weather when I got to Europe and it was like blazing hot. It's like, my goodness. Um, um, Pisco at Castillo says, did you see Harry and his wife, um, with Oprah at the Kevin Costner event? Yeah, I did just talk about it. I saw it. It was weird, awkward, but that's Harry and Meghan. Uh, not a surprise that they would go to that. They desperately need the validation from the people in the neighborhood where they live because <laughs> that's all they care about. And Catherine um, asked um, one of our members, how was the coordination display? It was awesome. I still, and I hate to say it really bummed we didn't get to see Catherine's dress and her headpiece and Charlotte's dress. Um, you know, I think sometimes Charles is, is worried that Catherine and William will overshadow him. Um, and so I understand maybe somewhat his hesitancy, but they, they always will. Sorry, Charles. They just always will. Um, I think it would have been better to keep, to have them there too. Because I think the details on Catherine's dress would have been magnificent to see. The, the details on Charles's um, outfit and Camille's outfit was just very fun to see. It was very nice. Uh, although we did have a, this couple, and um, everybody in the line started to get really, really annoyed. Because this this couple, man and wife, husband and wife, you know, older couple, stood there for like five minutes going, oh, did you see that? Did you see that? Oh, look, look, did you see the poppies? I didn't see the poppies yet. <laughs> we're like, there's like a line of people because we're all trying to proceed past. And it's like, this is like a 30 second thing. You look, you you check it out and then you move on. Um, <laughs> this couple, they, then they stopped and they were examining the shoes. And I'm like, oh my gosh, can we please move on? Um, but I did think they were magnificent. I, um, Camilla's robe, I think, was incredibly beautiful. It was also fun to see a lot of the thrones because um, they didn't show us everything. But uh, there was one behind, because they, they did a couple of different ones. Now I'm kind of remembering, because it's um, remembering because the chairs um, Charles and Camillo used in part of the ceremony were initially used by Elizabeth and Philip. And you could see Elizabeth and Philip's um, insignias on the bottom of the chairs. You knew which one belonged to which. And then in the corner, you saw actually King George and Queen Mary's little thrones. And then in the next room, they had reused thrones from Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, and then um, King George. And so they had those. And then there was ones behind, and I couldn't quite figure out who they belonged to. And unfortunately you can't take pictures. And so it's harder to get those details. Um, that's I always bummed when they don't, they tell us you can't take pictures. Like sometimes I get it. And sometimes I'm like, oh, come on, nobody lives here anymore. You're really revealing state secrets by having us take, not having us take pictures. Cause it does help to remember. Um, but yeah, it was very, very cool. Highly recommend. Um, Camille's dress looked great. So did, um, Charles look, um, I just wish they had included more of the Royals. I just think that would have made it even better. And that is the room where they have um, the state banquets. And it's it's both bigger and smaller than you might think. <laughs> I always felt like that the whole time. I was like, oh, this is like so big and yet so small. Um, and so when we have Tarina, thank you so much, uh, Tarina. I hope you're doing well from Canada. Uh, thank you so much for the super sticker. Um, you are fabulous. Thank you. Okay. So, um, so Kieran asks, what was the favorite part of your trip? The video was amazing. So nice to see how other Royals do things. Um, hum, I don't know yet. I would say Buckingham Palace was definitely high up there. Uh, cause I just, it's something I hadn't done. I've been to London four times this year first time I've done it. And I really, really, really did enjoy it. Um, it was just fabulous to be in there, fabulous to see everything. And probably my second though, was definitely the Jubilee concert in Sweden. Um, it was just so cool to be there for two hours 
in front of the Royals, taking pictures, watching them interact and stuff like that. Just that, that just kind of just like being able to see people interact and catching them as they're interacting is, is really cool. And um, Victoria is just, she really is a dream to photograph. Um, she's very expressive, uh, but she's not like too over the top. Like she laughs when it's appropriate and she just looks engaged. And I think she is. And I think she's genuinely enjoying herself. And when you have somebody like that, they're, they're fun to photograph uh, because they're not there just like with a plain resting face. Like she looked just very engaged, very excited. Um, and she wasn't, you know, slouching and just going, oh, but you could just tell she really, really enjoyed it interacting with her kids. It was great. I really did, did enjoy that. And it was a great time too to really work on my, some of my photography skills. <laughs> All right, Mama Otter, thank you so much for the tip. Hi, Brittany, so exciting. You saw the coronation exhibit coming in late. Did they have Kate and Charlotte's dress? Could you make out the Jack Russells? Yes, I could make out the dogs. One of them was a bit more hidden behind part of the, like the cloak, cape, whatever. Um, but no, no Kate and Charlotte dresses. And I, I really think that was a miss that, that it kind of bugged me because I would have been really, really interested in seeing that, especially Catherine's headpiece. Um, I just think that would have been absolutely marvelous to see. And I was just super, I was just super excited about that. And it just it wasn't there. And I'm like, oh, come on now, come on. So I really wanted to see that and they didn't have it. So yeah, but thank you, Mama Otter. Yeah, it was a, it was, it was really, really nicely done. We did have a couple of the page boys outfits and I don't know if, one of them belonged to George or not. They didn't specify, unfortunately. So I imagine either, either it was or it wasn't. And it just, again, it feels like weirdly, like Charles just wants like all the attention on himself. And like, yeah, you know, William's kind of going to be more than Charles here, um, to be quite honest. Um, so yeah, bummed about that for sure. Uh, Joan, Brittany, have you popped into Fornum and Mason? I have not. I went to Fenwick today, Selfridges and John Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hit some of the, the big ones trying to find a couple of things. And one of my favorite makeup brands, they only have one pop-up shop in Selfridges. So um, I just went in there. I love Lisa Eldridge makeup. I think it's great. Um, so just went in there real quick. Uh, Karen says, what was your favorite part of your trip? The video was amazing. Nice. Okay. I did uh, answer this question earlier. Sometimes my thing, when I jump backwards and forwards between things that like can't see things. Hi, Jackie. Hello, Brittany. Nice to have a Saturday morning live stream back. Love your post while you've been away in Europe. Must be, must be great to be back in England. Pink hand waving, pink hand, pink waving. Um, yeah, it's been great to be back here. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's nice. Cause it, like, I know exactly where I'm going. I know exactly which trains to take to get to where I need to be. Um, at this point, I'm like very familiar with, like, I would call them my haunts. <laughs> um, I know Bond Street and um, it's not Oxford. It's Ox the Oxford Circus Station. I know those pretty well just because I, I know there. I also went to um, bookstore um, um, Waterstones, which was fantastic because I needed a couple books for my research project. And because a couple of them just like weren't, they're hard to find. And they had them because it's nice because, you know, outside of in the United States, we don't get like, like they have like a five racks of like British history section. I'm like, this is awesome. So anyways, it was good. Lisa says, um, maybe Kevin is forming a divorce support club that Harry can join. Maybe. Yeah. He had a, he had a, a nasty divorce too, but, um, yeah, that was, that was an interesting case. I'm like, honey, you signed a prenup. I don't think you just, I don't think you have a lot of, a lot of leeway here. All right. Um, uh, Martin as well. Hello, member for a month. Hi, Brittany. What was, um, it like covering the Royals with press credentials, by the way, please tell channel members, uh, they may have a free milestone highlight chat below. Oh, thank you. Um, so yeah, so, oh, it was fun and it was easier. It was easier because I mean, you still had to wait. You still were on your feet, but you didn't have to be there like so sneaking early. And it was nice to be around the professionals. And I was trying to be very conscientious sometimes because it's like, I wanted my shot, but I was like, but these people actually really, really need to make the money <laughs> with good pictures. So it's like, I didn't want to get in their way or get too pushy because, you know, I just do consider myself um, lower on the totem pole and working my way up. So I just wanted to be very courteous of them and the work they do because um, I've relied on their photographs quite a bit. Uh, so it was a lot of fun and it was definitely helpful 
uh, just super helpful, um, especially in Sweden. Like I wouldn't have been in the palace. Um, ironically, there, you know, there's some instances where you might have gotten a better view at the Royals if you were in the crowd. Um, especially the concert, definitely no. Um, we were like right there. I was like the first press person there, which was super, super fun. Um, cause I just wanted to make sure I got there early and got a good spot. And I didn't have my step stool, but there was a Getty photographer. She let me use her step stool at one point. So I could try to get a couple pictures of like Madeline. Cause I had a hard time getting pictures of her, um, based on the angle, but we had a really good spot, um, compared to even the Swedish photographers who were on the other side of us. Um, because, um, even though the sun wasn't great on our side, um, Victoria, at least I know for sure, tended to look over to our side more because that's where her kids were. Um, so we tended to get, I think, more of her full face and even the um, the Swedish photographers, which was awesome. And so I think it was much bunch better to be on our side. Um, and in the Netherlands, it was really, really helpful. Um, it might have been... I mean, it's, it's tough to say. Um, I wish I'd been there just a smidge earlier because then maybe I could have get gotten better pictures of them leaving the palace. I really couldn't get good pictures of them leaving the palace. But I got pictures of them in the carriages, um, which was, again, learning curve, going to get better at that at some point. But the the glass, it's hard harder. I mean, I do manually focus the camera, but it was still hard to get the focus right. Um, so that's that'll be a work in progress. And obviously, they're going in and out of focus because they're moving. Um, and definitely the balcony shot was awesome though, because for the crowd, unless you were right near the gates, the, the, the gates was in your way. So if you got a picture of them, you get a picture through the gates, but, um, for where we were, and I had to step ladder enough and I had like a great little pocket to look up at, at them with, cause some of the photographers had like step ladders with like four steps. So they got up really high. Um, so I had my little step stool though. So I had this like perfect little window and I was able to get some really good shots. Um, but without that, I would have been battling the, um, the, the, the lines of the fence. So that, in that way, it was really helpful. And again, you don't have quite as many people in your way. And you also too can leave your bag someplace and like move somewhere else and not have to worry about, you know, somebody, cause sometimes with you, if you're in the crowd with all the people you're like, okay, my bag, I got expensive camera equipment. I can't leave it here. Cause somebody's going to take it. And so the only time I like was like, okay, I got it pull everything closer to me was when I knew they were going to let the crowd in and the crowd was going to be right next to the fence up until that point. Like I could leave my bag at different sections of the, um, the piece. And I actually had a little camera I have, and I was able to put it on a little tripod and actually put it in position so it could get the carriages going past. And I was on the other side. So, um, I couldn't have done something like that if I didn't have press credentials and had more space to move and, you know, you have kind of a more protected area. So you're not worried quite as much about your equipment and stuff. I mean, you still like still not going to leave it just lying there by itself for the most, most of the point, most of the time, but at least you have, um, you know, you have people there, a lot of people watching stuff. So anyways, lots, lots easier in a lot of ways. Um, still challenging sometimes, uh, still sometimes crowd maybe got a bet, a better angle at some points, but I had a lot of good. Uh, I, I would say if I had to choose between credentialed and non-credentialed, I'd go to credential pretty much every day. <laughs> this fan, um, thank you so much for the tip. How do you think the King's trip to France went? It seemed like everyone is tired of Harry and Meghan drama, both in the U S UK and on the international level. I think it went really well. Um, it almost to me seemed like over the top. Uh, so I was just curious. Um, I don't know if anybody's familiar with the geopolitics of this topic. If there's anything particular from the UK that France wants, because it seemed like France went way out of its way to make it like the best tour ever. And I understand that um, from a diplomatic standpoint. At the same time, though, it seemed a little over the top. It seemed like a lot. And obviously there's a close historic connection between the UK and France. Actually, that's part of my research paper is on is because uh, I'm doing early, early British history. And so it's kind of on um, kind of whether or not William the Conqueror was like officially given succession rights um, by Edward the Confessor. And so there's kind of, you know, we have the connection between the Normans and uh, the British. And so that's a huge, huge historic connection there. And so obviously a huge historic relationship between France and the UK. Um, but it just seemed like a lot, but it also too could be because France had to cancel it. It was, it's their opportunity to show 
the world that they're in control and everything, the government. And so it was just interesting from a, a history, geopolit geopolitical standpoint. Um, all that stuff always interests me, I gotta say. All right. And Peggy, all, thank you so much. Um, did you see the photo op that Megan took of with the children in the wheelchair at the Invictus game, she never interacted with him, just wanted the photo. Uh, I did see that, you know, it was a little bit hard to see everything. Just wanted to um, just try to get people the benefit of the doubt. But I mean, she really just wants to be there and have people take her picture. That's all she cares about. Um, and so this, is that a surprise at all? No, no. Um, Wendy asked, have you ever taken the um, Caledonian sleeper? I've not. I've taken the Eurostar. I will say like my initial trip on the Eurostar got like can't I had like I had a mess trying to get on the Eurostar from because I wanted to take it from the Netherlands to the UK because I have a lot of luggage and I did not want to go through airport security. I hate going through airport security because you have to condense everything and people get fussy and it's a pain in the butt. Um, but you had to do that between Austria and, and Sweden and Sweden and the Netherlands. So I was like, okay. In the Netherlands, I'll take a train because uh, you can actually take the Eurostar from the Netherlands to the UK. Um, it does go through um, um, Belgium and France, but you, you can take it. But I was at the Amsterdam train station and they go, oh, yeah, um, they've canceled it here. You're going to have to catch it in Rotterdam. <laughs> I'm like, excuse me now? I was like 30, 45 minutes until the train was supposed to leave. And like Rotterdam is far away. And actually, ironically, I was in The Hague and it was like a little bit south of The Hague. So I would have been. So I took a, a pointless train from The Hague to Amsterdam. And so then I had to take a train from Amsterdam to Rotterdam. And I was like, I was like looking at the time going, the train was supposed to take off like now. And I'm like still on the train a couple stops away. And I'm like, I'm never going to make it because I miss kind of the more direct one. And so anyways, I was, um, thankfully they had held the train because I think they didn't give people enough time to move. Um, but I wish I'd picked it up in Rotterdam because that would have made more sense. But the nice thing is, the nice thing is, is I got an e-voucher, so I was able to use it for a discount on my next train to France. Because again, it is kind of nice because you can get up and use the bathroom. You don't have to worry about like, you know, turbulence. And I mean, the train moves quite a bit. And sometimes you really feel how fast you're going because you're going very fast. Um, but it's nice. Um, MSR says, hi, Brittany. Why were the other European royals not at the King Carl Gustav, King Carl Gustav's of Sweden's Golden Jubilee. Um, so it's actually kind of a simple answer. And the answer is, is that, um, where, where's your question? Okay, um, that it was really reserved just for the Scandinavian royals. Again, they're very close, have exceptionally close family connections. Of course, all the royals are related pretty much. At some point, their their lines intersect. Um, that's how that <laughs> would all goes. But um, the Scandinavian royals, in terms of these jubilees, it's it's only them. And uh, so Scandinavian and Norwegians, I mean, they're basically all cousins. They vacation together. They're just very, very close. And then they asked some of the other Nordic countries, so uh, Finland and Iceland. And I think there was another country, technically, that was supposed to join. Maybe that was it. Anyways, so... They all came, um, but yeah, it was mostly reserved for the Scandinavian royals. And if you think it as well, no foreign royals came to the Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee. Um, but the Brits are also, I would say, stingy about certain things. <laughs> that sounds bad, but it's it's true. That's true. Because um, the, the, the other royal families, they, they just seem to interact more than the Brits, which is like such a shame because I just love to see. Um, I mean, we get some it sometimes it would be fun to see like Catherine and Maxima around a lot. Because, well, A, I love Max Mund. Just be, that would be fun. Okay. So we have um, Lisa. When did hot pants come back? I don't know. I've never been into hot pants. Don't wear them. Don't have them. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, Caroline asks, uh, Liz Sweeney, why would there be new travel restrictions? Um, I don't see what that's referring to, but obviously, oh, <laughs> I was traveling with masks and any talk of new travel restrictions. No, as far as I'm aware, and um, I'm kind of over any travel restrictions at this point, personally. Um, you know, you take you take risks and things happen and it's either good or bad and hopefully everything everything's fine. Um, so I am not interested in hopefully having any of that because it was kind of a a pain in the patuckus, especially long flights. If it was a long haul flight, I had to wear a mask. I probably wouldn't fly just because I don't want to do that. 
or I'd be drinking the whole time going, I'm still drinking. <laughs> Peggy says, thank you so much for the tip as well. Um, I just wanted to let you know that you have uh, really enjoyed your videos on your trip. You're doing a beautiful job and I've learned so much. Thank you for taking us along. Looking forward to more. Why? Thank you. Yeah, it was so been so, so fun so far. It's been busy and crazy and like trying to get everything is, is always a challenge. And, but I, I just do enjoy it every time. It's just so fun. And it's so fun to be back here yet. Um, it's just so, so nice to be back here. So yeah, I really do enjoy it. Just enjoy being here and looking at the history and everything. So it's fun. Uh, Lee Foster says, morning, Brittany. Do you think they are filming another season of their Netflix docu-series? They could be. I mean, because that's the only card they have to play. That's literally the only card they have to play. Um, I mean, Netflix always wanted to keeping up with the Sussexes, um, essentially. But it, again, Megan ha has massive control issues. And she's all about image. And she wants to control the image. And if she can't control the image, like, I don't think it goes well. She just always wants people to see, again, always think of Meghan Markle as an Instagram influencer in terms of, like, she only wants you to see what she wants you to see and never anything underneath. She always wants you to believe and, and cling to the veneer she gives you, not really who she is underneath. Um, so, yeah, that that's... Um, they could be, I would think that's probably the only thing Netflix really wants from them. Uh, Kyler says, I haven't had Netflix since they um, stopped password sharing, LOL, but I'm not sure I'd have um, watched Heart of Invictus, even if I could, not knowing how much horrid Harry speaks about himself in it. Yeah, especially in the beginning, it, the first 10 minutes are about him and it's, it's dull um, and it's unnecessary. And you almost feel like, especially at one point when he's talking to his friends, you know, he almost asked them and he doesn't ask them in, in quite this way, but you get the feeling of, you know, how did you think when I asked you to do this, how great did you think my organization is? It's like, it's all about me, 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 I, I, I. So it's just too much. Tori asked if you could give Megan a little fashion advice, what it would be. Um, oof, it would definitely be um, dress for your body type, not what you think your body type is. Um, Megan has um, very thin limbs and a very square um, frame. And that is, I think, exceptionally hard to dress, but you can do it. Uh, I would also tell her to go back to whoever was dressing you uh, on suits because they did a much better job than you were doing on your own. Um, and also, you are not 5'11", so do not dress in outfits that you need a 5'11 frame to pull. Because <laughs> there's just certain things where you need the height to make it work. Like that red dress, which is hideous. She needs to be 5'10", 5'11", to make that dress at least somewhat look better. Um, and her smaller frame, it just dwarfed her and looked, I mean, it looked terrible anyways. It was horribly fitted, everything. But it was still just really bad. Uh, Alice, hi. Thank you so much for the tip. Hi, Brittany. Love your coverage. Is it unusual for both Casey and Prince William to be out of the country at the same time? Is this something they normally avoid? Usually, yes, they would avoid it. Um, generally, most royal families do. They try not to have the heir and the monarch out of the country at the same time. But that did actually recently happen in Denmark. And actually, the queen's sister, Princess, oh, I'm bring, blanking on her name, Benedict, Be Benedict, Benedictine. Bernice, something to that effect. Um, she stepped in as had a state while the queen was out of the country and, and um, crown prince Frederick were as well. So it is something that they normally avoid, but it's not like an impossible thing. And so um, probably Anne was tapped as, by Charles ago. And so me and William are both going to be out. You're kind of sort of like the, the person people should call on next. Adam says, how long are you in London? I am leaving tomorrow. Um, hi, Brittany um, from Australia. I'm an avid fan of your show. It's my first time making a live. Well, awesome. And I know it's a really, really early or late in the evening, early morning for you. So thank you so much for stopping in. Um, Lisa says, considering how heartless the Sussexes are towards their family, you'd think um, it boosts their image. They would let May, uh, Mr. Markle see his grands. Um, so yes, the thing is with Megan and Aries, like they don't do the simple things that would make them better. Like they could get so much positive PR by making peace with the royal family, like so much. Um, and honestly, too, to me, I know some people are, you know, very much pro the Markle family. I, I'm more a, a ambivalent about them. Um, I'm just not that. 
I, I think she should let her dad see her grand his grandkids. But I also understand too that I don't think the Markle side is all that great. I don't think Harry and Meghan are all that great either. I think two things can be true at the once is that yes, the desire for family bonding is true, but everybody wants to make money in that scenario. I think they all do. Um, so yeah, and I also think Megan is kind of terrible for making a big deal um, out of something that she herself did multiple times in terms of having paparazzi take her picture. Yeah, I, like why is she giving her dad flack for doing the same exact thing she's did time and time again? No idea. Uh, Red says, I look, I'll bet sweet little Pippa misses you. I, she does, and I miss her too. I miss her too. I miss my baby. I miss my baby. <laughs> Yeah, we just want need to have a really, really good cuddle. Although she may just like ignore me for a while. She may. She's done that before. We, we, we sent her to like doggy boarding for like two days and she came back and we picked her up and we were all in a family because we were going to a family wedding and we were driving and everything. And so my parents um, and me and my sister were in the car and we have four dogs. So all four dogs in the car. Me and my sister have two small dogs. So we picked our dogs up, went to Panera to get some breakfast food. And literally my dog went to my sister's lap and sat there and didn't even look at me. <laughs> she would not even look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting the total back silent treatment. I had to, I had to tempt her with bits of my egg breakfast of like my, I had like an egg bagel sandwich thing. I had to tempt her. So yeah, she can be a little snot when she wants to be, but she's so cute. I can't wait to see her again. Uh, Diz fan says with the failure of the Invictus documentary, do you think Netflix will drop Harry and Meghan sooner rather than later? Um, at this point, I think they'll let their contract run out. Um, but they don't have anything like much to offer. Like they, they just don't. And again, they should have proven themselves as creatives before going down the, like the killing the family um, relationship route. Cause now they just look toxic and it's just like everybody distanced from them. So it's like, I mean, they're clearly the issue in this scenario. Um, Stacy says, did you get a refill on your hot chocolate supply? Yes. Yes, I did. Uh, I went to um, Woodard's. Um, and I was thinking, oh, cause it's right by Buckingham palace. There's a winter. It's right by Buckingham palace. I'm like, oh, this won't be too hard. And then I got a fascinator from John Lewis. And so I had the fascinator bag, the heavy hot chocolate bag and another bag. And yeah, it was, it was bad. And apparently though, I did find out this from John Lewis. Cause I went to their fascinator section, which was huge in the spring, very small now. And apparently once they sell out of all the stock that they have, they get a new batch in March. And, and then they kind of gear up for the fascinator season later. So if you're ever curious, it's a March and it, it fits the timeline. Cause I went to the UK in March for the, um, Commonwealth service to kind of practice my photography skills. Um, cause again, Royal events are very specific and different than any other event. Like you cannot, like, unless I got family and friends who get out of a car, walk really fast a bunch of times. <laughs> That's the only way I could practice something very similar in the States because celebrities get out of the car slowly. Royals just like bolt out of the car and move. Um, so it was just an opportunity to, to practice that. And I went there and I was like, oh, they had a bunch of new fascinators. Like, this is great. And I went there today and they didn't have any, but they had a really cute one. So, and it wasn't too bad. So I hadn't got that, but it's always a pain in the butt to get them home. Like they gave me a, a, a hat box, but I always take the hat out of it because you can't take the hat box. It just won't work. And then I clip it to my roller bag because that's the easiest way to do it. Um, Donna Lynn says, have you considered moving to England to be close to all the royal events? I have, um, but there's a specific way you have to do it. And so it, it is kind of complicated. Um, and I really couldn't do it in the UK. I think, gosh, how does it work? There was something maybe that I could make work, but like, you know, you have to have a visa and visas have, have re specific requirements and I wouldn't quite meet them because I would need to have like a job, like a, like a company in the UK paying me to move. Asma says, which worlds are the BRF close, um, closely related to, um, Norwegians, especially, um, because Norwegians are actually pretty high up in the line of succession. I think they're maybe in the eighties. So they're pretty high up in the line. Um, the the Dutch are in the line of succession, technically. Um, I think in the 300s or something. I looked one time. It's been a while. And obviously, people have had kids since then. So I don't know where they are in the line now. But that's my understanding. And 
I don't think the Swedes are in the line of succession. But most of them are related via like Queen Victoria or somewhere else down the line. Queen Victoria is considered the grandmother of Protestant Europe, Western Europe. And then um, Louis XIV's brother, Philippe um, Orléans, was kind of the, considered the grandfather of Catholic Europe because most of them related to him. So anyways, uh, Deborah says, are you going to do a video on Camille's fashion in France? No expert, but I thought her clothes were great. I'll probably include it on my best and worst list this week, but I don't think I'll do a full video because I just don't think there'd be a huge audience for that. So, um, good morning. Have you thought about doing a video on the history of royal scandals? Yes. There's been like so many videos I want to do, but time is always the issue. And obviously as well, when you have news going on and everything, it, so a lot of that takes priority over the evergreen content. Like last year I tried to do it and I was like realizing, oh my gosh, it's October. I got to do this again is I did a video on um, Elizabeth Bathory, who is one of the, she was a royal within the um, household in Hungary. And although she's not quite as specific, um, she is one of the inspirations for Dracula, or you could consider her one of the inspirations. Um, obviously the main historical inspiration is Bob the Impaler. Uh, who's a contemporary of hers they like they sh they were alive uh, somewhat around the same time he was earlier than her but i think they she alive at the same time um let's see so queen rania uh was on hoda um coffee today on tasha lover she speaks english so fluently yes she does asima says did anyone go to the invictus games um Maybe somebody did, but um, I did not. And the Sussex stands went wild, can like creating all these giant conspiracies that I was going to the Invictus games. And I have yet to receive an apology for that. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> oh, Rebecca says, what did you buy from Lisa Eldridge? I love her eyeliners. Oh my gosh. So I did get the eyeliners. So, um, and I have a lot of her lipsticks. Like my favorite is Kitten Mischief. Um, she's a British one. I, I used to watch her when she was like, uh, she was part of, she's a fashion art or sorry, makeup artist. And she was part of, she would do videos for Chanel, like way back in the day. This is like 10 plus years ago. And so, um, I haven't tried her eyeliners yet, but I did get a couple of her eyeliners. I got the, um, brown one and the black one. Cause I could use, um, a black one. And I, I tried them in the store and they were really, really soft. And then I got one of the eye palettes, which I haven't yet, which is the muse one. Um, I did order some things from her not too long ago. I like her little, um, she has little like liquid things, that, you know, like one color you can put on your eye real quick. Um, you know, for my, like consider them like my five minute makeup looks. Um, but yeah, she does, um, she came out with some new stuff not too long ago, but yeah, the lip liner or the eyeliner I'm excited about. And obviously she just has so many great things. If you don't know her, Lisa Eldridge, she is a British makeup artist and she has a YouTube channel and she used to do like makeup videos when like Chanel was coming out with new collections and stuff. That's how I first became aware of her. And so um, she launched her own makeup line though. And I think overall it's pretty good. I like the lipsticks. Um, and yeah, like um, Kitten Mischief is by far my favorite. Um, so yeah, if you're ever interested, um, but usually in the States, you have to order it online because it's not available in stores, but they do have it at Selfridges. So I was like, well, I'll go in there and I wanted to see, they have this one palette that's really popular that they've been sold out for, for like five months. And so I was like, do you have it? And they're like, no, and I'm like, of course you don't. Nobody has this. They're like, well, we have this one. I'm like, yeah, but that won't work good with my coloring. Um, Yvonne says, hi from seeing for it. Will you be coming over in November? I'm kind of debating on it, leaning towards no. Um, just because there was kind of an opportunity that came up in October for something related to YouTube that I'll be going to in, in Los Angeles. Um, and it's just a really long flight and it's just very, very expensive. Um, and this was an expensive trip. So I just don't think, I just don't think I can do it all. And so, yeah, sadly, Maureen Griffin asks, have you had a chance to do any research for your degree while in the UK? Not really. Um, I, I did pick up some books, which was awesome. Cause I, I, even when I didn't hear about, I was going to go to the library. Now I realize I kind of had forgotten about that. Um, cause I was just looking for a couple other things for videos. <laughs> so mm, yeah, 
So I haven't been able to do too much. Luckily, pretty much everything's available online anymore. And this is um, not like doing like dissertation research. If I was like doing dissertation research, I definitely would have been like, okay, I need to go and, and actually get it. But um, at this point, um, since I'm not doing that, I don't feel like a huge need to because I don't need, I can't even read it anyways. I mean, it would have been cool. Not to saying it wouldn't have been cool, but I, I can't read any of it anyways. <laughs> so I'm like, um, um, I think I kind of put that on my mind. Shirley says, um, Harry and Megan's PR strategy <laughs> or stupidity. Um, combination of the both, like so much of their stuff is just so over the top and so excessive that it just rubs people the wrong way. I think so many times, um, like subtlety is an art that Meghan Markle is, is firmly unaware of. She does not know like set like she wouldn't know subtly unless it literally like slapped her and like slammed her in the head. Like the woman cannot do subtle because <laughs> there's so many different ways they could do what they're doing and just be subtle about it. And she lacks all subtlety. Um, hi from France. Which food did you prefer in Europe? Do you have a favorite dish? Um, I always go for pizza. <laughs> I know pizza and burgers are like my two, like two things I always go for. Um, I will say my favorite food thus far was in Sweden. Sweden had excellent food. I did try some traditional Swedish meatballs because somebody was like, oh, why aren't you doing that? I was like, okay, fine. Because, you know, I'm kind of kind of a baby about, you know, trying different things sometimes. Um, and it was really good. I went to a place just kind of pretty close to the palace. It was excellent. Um, but I always get pizza too, pizza and burgers. <laughs> and um, so, and today after we get done, I'm hopefully going to go and try to get to this pizza place. I really liked it. it was, it's like almost a hole in the wall place, but it was really good. And I, I tried to get there another time, but it was closed cause it was like a holiday and stuff. And it's kind of like somewhat off the beaten track, but I went there because after I was done with the Commonwealth day, I was like, I had been there all day. I was tired. I just wanted to like move and go somewhere else. And I figured everybody who was there, there's not that many restaurants around Westminster. And so I just got on the subway and like went to the next stop and yeah. Um, Kay, Kylar says, hi, Brittany. Have you ever visited, uh, Whitby in North Yorkshire? No, I haven't been too far outside of London. My plan was earlier this year, I was going to spend a decent amount of time in the UK after a, a member's trip, but, um, I decided to cut my trip short, which I'm glad I did. Cause obviously this September trip ended up being really long, um, as well. And so, um, but I wanted to travel more around cause I haven't, I haven't been that far around, um, UK yet. I've been to Edinburgh. Um, so poetry, a chick asks, hi, Brittany. I love your videos. So happy your, your lives are back. I miss them. Oh, I'm th so thankful. I miss you guys as well. <laughs> Rebecca says, when next in the UK, would you do a meet and greet your UK fans would love to meet you? Yes, I think so. Um, these trips have just been kind of so short that there just hasn't really been a chance. Um, and so I just think, and I wanted to do something really, really cool. And so yeah, hopefully I will get to do one at some point. Um, so I'm just reading something here. So this is from, um, I have somebody watching the stream because the Sussex stands were kind of awful earlier this month. And so says, Sean Kana says, do you um, think that Princess Anne expires of that? I wonder to um, that she will leave all her jewelry and tiara to the monarch either King Charles or Prince William, when he becomes King, this person has posted this question several times. Okay. So I missed that one. And so, Oh, and I see here. Okay. Sean. So, um, that is definitely an interesting question and I don't quite know the answer, but here's, here's this, here's the, the skinny is if you leave your jewelry to the monarchy or specifically the monarch, you don't really, your family doesn't have to pay taxes on it. Um, and so it's a way to get out of inheritance taxes on certain items, because what happened when Princess Margaret died is the family had to pay off, like had to pay off a lot of inheritance taxes. And so the easiest way to do that is to sell her jewelry. And that's what they did. Um, so they stole the Baltimore tiara, some other really impressive pieces. Um, but I don't think obviously a lot of people have questioned about the lotus flower. Uh, obviously, since we've seen that on Catherine, I believe um, Margaret gave that or back to the monarchy or um, left it to the monarchy, whatever. And then we also have the turquoise here, which I also believe was probably left to the monarchy. Um, I don't know that for sure, but that would be, that would be my imagining. So if Anne wants to protect her jewelry, 
um, any historic pieces, especially, I believe they'll leave her, she'll lead them to the monarchy. Like particularly, um, I want to say it's called the meander tiara, the, the Greek one that she has that belonged to, I believe princess Alice. So Prince Philip's mother, um, that one, I believe she would leave to the crown. Um, but I don't think some of the other pieces she may not, she, you know, she may want them to go to, you know, she has several granddaughters. She has four granddaughters. And so I imagine she'll, she would want them to have maybe a piece or two. Um, so I can imagine that that's where, that's where they'll go. Um, but I'm not sure entirely, but I imagine any, Anne is very respectful of the monarchy. So I imagine any big historic pieces would go back to the crown. And again, that way her children don't have to pay inheritance taxes on it. And she could leave them to the crown anyways with the stipulation to Charles. Hey, I want my my granddaughters to be able to use this. I want, I want um, you know, my daughter-in-law to be able to use this. My daughter, whatever. And Charles will probably be like, sure, um, that's totally fine. Um, so uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. So um, Margaret says, good morning. I have... I have to compare Megan marching with veterans in shorts to Catherine's gorgeous attire when visiting the summers at Airset base. Will Megan ever get it right? Probably not. Um, but again, Megan wasn't there to represent the Invictus Games or anything else but her own um, interests as an influencer. <laughs> yes. Um, so, yeah. Ritz says a pizza and burgers and all American girl. Love you, Brittany. Why? Thank you. Yes. I'm on all American. I mean, I will venture out when it comes to sweets and like desserts. <laughs> um that I have no problem with, but, um, sometimes too, especially when you're like paying for a meal and it could get a little bit pricey. Sometimes you kind of want to know what you're going to get and some things could be great and some things not so much. Um, but you know, the, the meatballs in Sweden were excellent. And I actually, there was actually a really good burger place in old town in Sweden. Um, really good. And I think it was run by an American or something. Cause everybody in there was like the, the guy running it was speaking English, um, which was somewhat rare. Cause you know, usually, you know, yes, they all can speak English to you, but then they'll be like, Oh, okay, let's go back and, you know, speak Swedish when we're talking with each other. And when he was talking to his employees, he was talking English. So I was like, Oh, he must be must be American or something. Oh, um, Sean says, take care of yourself. And now that I and many others appreciate your content and the efforts you put into them. Why, thank you. I try to do as much as I can. <laughs> um, I, I do push myself, but I, I like to. It is fun. It is fun. I'm, I mean, I still am not the biggest fan of editing, but that's just part of making videos is editing the video. So it is fun. It's hard sometimes too. But yeah, it was also fun to, it's also fun too to walk around going, hmm, what a royal wear this. And there's actually a dress I kind of am bummed I didn't end up buying. It was from Hobbs. I still have a sale, so I may still get it. But um, it was really cute. And I was like, well, I don't know. But now I'm kind of wishing I had gotten it. Okay, I don't know. So they said cream in here. And I don't know if the cream was the whipped cream or if it was something else because it just feels very... Um, much. Saunders says, Netherlands, we have a beautiful hall of knights at the Houses of Parliament, and that is where the king normally reads his speech. Unfortunately, the Houses of Parliament are being renovated. Okay, I was wondering, because it seems so weird to me at the time that they're like, oh, go to the Royal Theater to pick up your press pass. And I'm like, Royal Theater, what? And I couldn't figure out where it was for an instance, because it kept pointing me to like Amsterdam. I'm like, well, that's not right. It's in The Hague. I know it's in The Hague, but I'm still really bummed I didn't walk in there and take a picture of it, like the building. So, um, Alice says, have you tried, um, a British fish and chips? Um, yeah, no, <laughs> I am not a fan of fish, so I have not tried fish and chips. So yeah, I know, I know. Terrible, terrible. Um, yeah, I'm not a fan of, of fish. Um, I am an adventurous eater, but I also like to be adventurous with things I know, <laughs> Like different combinations of things I know, like honey on pizza is awesome. And I love anything with cheese. Um, more, the more cheese, the better. But I don't like pickles or tomatoes or um, cucumbers or other things. So I know I'm picky. Okay. Uh, Pez, um, sorry, Perez, thank you so much for your questions. So sorry, I missed it earlier. Thank you so much for your tip. Hello, enjoy your content. Also, has anyone told you that you look like a young version of Ben Ryan? You're so pretty. Enjoy your travels. Why, thank you. Yes, actually, a lot of you guys on here have told me I look like Meg Ryan. And what's funny too, is I actually did have somebody, I was like, 
in a CVS or something. And the, the cashier goes, has anybody ever told you you look like Meg Ryan? And I was like, you know what? Yes. You're the first person who's told me that face to face. But um, yeah, you're, um, I have heard that before, which I think is so sweet. Um, I just do do like it is really sweet and um, obviously she was America's sweetheart so I don't know if I'm America's sweetheart but um, I hope I'm sweet <laughs> and nice so um yeah so I really do appreciate it thank you and thank you so much for the tip and I saw something else on here oh Lisa says you're doing a fantastic job why thank you uh, MSR says, do you think Megan is now regretting leaving the BRF? Their offers seem to be dwindling. Um, I imagine sometimes, yes. Yes. Um, and yeah, their offers are dwindling. They really are. Like, who, like, why would you want Meghan Markle when you can get Catherine, the Princess of Wales? Um, and just every time they use the title, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, they even use that. That's um, Kevin Costner charity thing. Like, it just sounds dumb. Because... You can, that's just a Sussex. You're not even in, like, you're not even in the UK anymore. It sounds dumb. And you sound dumb for, um, like, being so obsessed with it. Um, Sugar Cookie says, isn't amazing. Uh, well, you went running and didn't include a two-hour path chase. Uh, yeah, that is hysterical. That is hysterical. Um, and again, I think it shows that the whole thing with Harry and Meghan was just, like, totally made up. Which everybody kind of knew. Um, and again, there's a lot of celebrities in New York. Yes, they get papped. Um, I, I almost say anymore that's pretty much anybody who gets papped, like they probably paid the photographers, to be honest, or told the photographer where they would be. That's kind of the way things go. So, anyways, Jackie Swan says, Will Megan make it as an influencer? Is she too disliked? I mean, she has a following, so they'll watch her but um i mean i just don't think that many other people well unfortunately again she she way overplayed her hand because the, the best thing she could have done the smartest thing she could have done is dated harry for a while broken up with him and then moved on to bigger and better things um that she decided to do everything at once was kind of like a bad bad thing uh renee says hi Brittany. missed your lives glad you were able to make these um great opportunities enjoy the rest of your trip why thank you i appreciate it um it's been great fun so far and i can't wait to continue on and but i'm looking forward to going home <laughs> uh looking forward to going home um martin says um uh, the beckons are doing a netflix show wow i didn't even know that i just looked it up it looks very good thanks for mentioning it should be pretty good that could be a very interesting um but you know because the beckons Definitely, David has actually achieved something. <laughs> um, Brittany, um, Maria asks, do you agree that because Megan didn't bother to learn how to be royal, she looked like um, someone from the crowd walking with the winners Invictus? I don't think it was necessarily royalty that she needed to learn from. She just needed to learn how to be an adult and a professional. Because <laughs> um, it doesn't take royalty to know that you probably shouldn't dress like that at an event. Like, Again, I don't understand why she wasn't dressing more like Harry in Invictus branded gear in some form or another. She did before. So I don't think it's it comes from royalty. I think it comes from being an adult and not being so obsessed with your own self-interest. Um, <laughs> Berkshire lady says you should try pie and mash. Somebody else, Joan, said, said it too. I don't know. I still want to try my, my pizza plates because it was really good last time I was there. Um... Lisa says, be careful with new foods. Nothing worse than traveling with a belly ache. What did I eat? I mean, there is some truth to that. I have tried snails, though. I tried snails, escargot in France, like years and years ago. It, tra it tasted like very gummy uh, chicken. It wasn't bad. Um, so, yeah, I have done that. So I am somewhat adventurous, but also not too adventurous. Like I'm adventurous if I, I like know the ingredients and like, you know, I, I'm like, Oh, I like those vegetables. I like that meat or something like that. I was like, okay, well I'll like that. But if it's like something like way outside what I normally eat or probably won't do it. <laughs> um, Deb says first slide. Oh, congrats. Thank you so much. I have been lucky enough to stay in one of the great grace and favor flats in Windsor Castle. It's a real driving past St. George's Chapel. The flat overlooked the Queen's Stables. That is so cool. That is so cool. That would be so awesome. Yeah. One day, maybe I'll be at, like an expert historian. And I can have a grace and favor home like Hampton Court. I think that would be my preferred location. Because 
I think Hampton Court is kind of awesome. Um, Kaylor says, uh, what about the battered sausage and chips from Chippy? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Um, Patty says, Brittany, I drive my family crazy. They, li they live to try new food, but for me, I go to pizza or cheeseburger and fries, no pickles and <laughs> butter on the side. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm a simple girl, guys. I really am. Like, I will take risk when it comes to desserts, but um, other things, usually not so much. <laughs> and it has served me well. Like, my, my, tummy isn't super freaked out by anything because it's mostly what what I eat. <laughs> um, Kyler says you're a CR. Wait, thank you. WR says American here. What is pie and mash? I think it's like shepherd's pie or something, which I'm just not generally a fan of. My dad likes it uh, or Popeye's or whatever. Uh, Sean Kane says I actually make my own tiara and I will be making a tiara for my golden birthday. That is awesome. That is awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Um, there's a place here somewhere in London where you can actually, um, uh, like borrow tiaras. Like you have to pay a down payment of like 1% of what the tiara is worth. Like I really want to do that for like a photo shoot at some point. Oh, Patty's thank you so much for the tip. You are so kind. I really do appreciate it this morning. And then, um, Terry says, hey, Harry and Megan are trying to elevate her first lady of Invictus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, Ritz says, just got a gift membership. Thank you so much. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't know you could do the gift memberships yet. Somebody asked me about that once and I couldn't figure out if there was a button to turn it on. So I'm glad it worked. I'm glad it worked. Um, Joan says, ah, oh, you made like weeks and eels then Brittany. Maybe. I, I did try it once, not saying I'm going to go to a French restaurant, a fancy French restaurant and order escargot. I will not. <laughs> Uh, Maria says nails, Brittany, you are so brave. I am brave. <laughs> um, yeah, because I'm I'm a nerd. Um, and I'm like not I'm I'm a very traditional girl in a lot of ways. <laughs> PM says, I believe Megan marching from the UK flag was giving the middle finger to Princess Catherine. I don't think it was. Uh, they, they again they asked somebody else to do that too. Um, but again, it just looked all weird. It just, it just did. It wasn't a good look. Um, and again, I think part of it too, is the Invictus games. I don't think the Invictus games knows what it is anymore. Cause again, it felt entirely like this is, this is a promotional thing for Harry and Megan. I'm like, well, you're the Invictus game. Shouldn't you be figuring out what to do with this? Oh, um, Laner said going to Scotland next year, you should try haggis. Now, see, here's the thing. If like I go to a restaurant and like the meal's already covered and so he's like, oh, try haggis, I'll try it. But if I'm buying it myself, I ain't going to buy a meal that I'm not going to like <laughs> just to try it. I mean, cause I figured meatballs would be pretty good. Meatballs, mashed potatoes, and like these berry things. I figured oh, that's the, most of the stuff I like, but haggis, I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> um, uh, M Martin says, uh, happy to support Brittany. I think it's a new feature on YouTube. Yeah. It's a new feature somewhere. I honestly do not know. Um, um, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm not totally sure. Um, so yeah. So Martin, how do you become a member? This is from asthma. It's like, um, I put it in the description box down below. I usually put it in there and in every video now there's a link to the memberships because for a while it was not showing up on your, oops, sorry got my phone it was not showing up on your phone and I wasn't sure why because it like shows up with other channels and stuff on their phone um but wasn't showing up with mine and I don't know why yeah it's still not showing up so anyways um <laughs> Alice says I'm the same boring food all the way why thank you I know some people some people like to try all the new stuff in the new area and I'm not that and I know, I know, I know I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> Max says, real news narco. Do you think the whole Harry and Meghan mess was the fault of the queen? If she had let Charles marry Camilla, none of this would have happened. Um, I, I you know, I think there are a lot of different factors in the Charles and, and Diana marriage, but I think the biggest thing is, is that, and I, I give the monarchy credit. They wanted to give Meghan Markle the benefit of the doubt, but they just have no idea. There's, this was a quote, I think from the courtiers book by, um, uh, Valentine Lowe. It's like, they just did not know what to do with her because she didn't want to be happy. Like, what do you do with somebody who doesn't want to be happy, who doesn't want to work with you, who doesn't want to do the things that normal people do to make a difficult situation work? She didn't want to because of that. It just became ridiculous. And 
um, they just don't know how to react to them. So Kylar says, who's a member, oh, our pie and mash is different than shepherd's pie. Our pies are like in a pastry. Oh, okay. Um, Ritz says, my food tastes are pretty simple as well. I'm dying, however, to try sticky toffee pudding. Desserts are my massive weakness. Me too. I'll try any dessert pretty much. Um, and I also got a toffee pudding hot chocolate because I tried it at Woodard's and it was pretty good. So at Woodard's, I got just a regular because I always get the regular. I got salted caramel, hazelnut, um, the Christmas version, and toffee pudding. So I think I got five canisters. <laughs> And then when I was at Buckingham Palace, they had a Christmas hot, Christmas hot chocolate. So I got a Christmas hot chocolate too. Um, uh, Lisa says, wearing her sunglasses in a veteran's parade, she wants to be an influencer. Or yeah, 100%. I need to do a video on that because she wants, was like all of it was influencer stuff. Um, Sandra says, all this food talk is making me hungry, hungry. Yeah, I haven't had lunch yet. I had like a little bit of a snack. I had a crepe, which was not good. It was like more of a dessert crepe. So I shouldn't have done that. But anyways, um, yeah, so I'm going to go try to find my pizza place, um, see if it's open. <laughs> Ritz says, eels, ew. Yeah, probably me too. Unless somebody like gave it to me and said, oh, we're bored. Because like it was like a part of a trip. And so they had ordered escargot for the table. So then I tried it. But would I have gone to a restaurant myself and go, you know what? I'm going to be really adventurous and order escargot. No, I'm not that person. Um, <laughs> Una says, some channels, you have to use the internet and not the um, YouTube app to get to the join up button to show up. Yeah, that's mine. I don't know why that is. I don't know why. But it is what it is. Um, Crystal says, I joined a Royal Family Facebook page without realizing that was actually my <laughs> page. It's actually pathetic how they're viewing her Invictus games as laughable. Yeah, they are they are strange lots sometimes. Cause I mean, sometimes, yeah, you know, people can have different interpretations of things. That's fine. If you like Megan think her, she's the greatest thing since sliced bread. I can't tell you otherwise, you know, everybody should have the right to think what they think, but sometimes to like deliberately, I can't even think of a good example on top of my head, but some of the illogic things like them trying desperately to make the heart of Invictus a thing. And I'm like, guys, it wasn't a thing. And they're like, Oh no, they don't release the top 10 list until, until the next week. And I'm like, no, no, no. They update it every day. You one piece is up there now. And it's the first one. And it came out after the hearts of Invictus. It wasn't a success. Like <laughs> it's like kind of like basic things. Um, mm. Um, Amanda says, and we'll wrap up here in a minute after maybe this last question or two. Um, uh, Amanda says, hi, Brittany, what are your thoughts on Megan's rapid weight loss? She struggled a lot with this in the past. Do you think something like Ozempic is in play? I wouldn't be surprised if it was. Um, it seems like everybody in Hollywood is on Ozempic. Um, I mean, she has a right to, 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 um, take it if she wants to. I mean, um, I mean, that's not the end of the world, but my issue will be is if she goes and starts telling people that she lost it all naturally when she had help. That's the issue I have. If you want to have plastic surgery, have plastic surgery. But what I hate is people who have had plastic surgery and then lie about it and then act like we're all crazy for thinking they had plastic surgery, kind of like Kylie Jenner, like that her whole body is basically the result of a surgeon and not natural. And then she thinks we're all crazy for thinking that. And you're, you know, she portrays the public as crazy. And I'm like, no, no. Um, so yeah, cause she really did struggle to lose the baby weight and not nothing wrong with that at all. Cause I mean, she is an older mom and everything, but um, if she starts selling, Oh, I just, you know, changed what I ate and worked out and be like, Hmm. No, uh, I don't know if I believe that or not. Um, Brittany, when's the next members only live stream? I'll have to double check and look because um, I, I can't remember what date we agreed on. And it's been a little bit. So I'll have to go back through and look and see kind of where I think it was like Wednesdays and Thursdays or something. And so um, should probably be next Wednesday, I'm thinking. Yeah, next Wednesday. Uh, just me. Hi, Brittany. My notification didn't work for me. I don't know what you, you're wearing, but from what I see, it looks very nice today. Hope you, the, um, uh, and love the hoops. Thank you. These are Michael Kors, like, uh, earring hoop things. Um, I had a, a, a uh, rose gold pair and then I lost one. So I have these in gold and silver. And then this sweater, if you guys are ever curious, this is Calvin Klein and these usually pop up in the fall and I get them at like TJ Maxx, Ross, well, more like TJ Maxx and Marshalls. Um, and so I have these in like a ton of different colors. I have them in white. 
I have one in khaki. I have one in black, obviously. I have one in like a maroon color. I have one in purple. I may have more, but those, no, I have one in brown. <laughs> I love these sweaters. They're soft um, and they're, they have a bit of a turtleneck, but they're not claustrophobic. So I don't really have a link because I feel like I never see them online. I just see them in stores, but you do see them. These are awesome. I love these because um, I, I like turtlenecks give me, um, um, they they feel too tight and constricting, um, but this is like a mock turtleneck, so it's not too bad. So, anyways, oh, poetry chick, you are a new member, yay! I'm so excited. Um, uh, so Lena said, I heard there's a short of a Zempic for diabetics because of the craze, yeah, and it seems like everybody in Hollywood's on it, and then they're like, oh no, it's just natural weight loss. I'm like, sure, sure. <laughs> um, so yeah, so guys, we will go ahead. Let's see. Um, well. Sandra says, have you noticed how many American states are national political preference in commons when seeing um, the like and dislike of Megan? I'm like, nobody cares. It'll down. Yeah, um, there is definitely a political leaning for most of the rabid Megan fans or stands. Um, and yeah, I mean, everybody's entitled to their political opinion, but does some tend to lean more towards, I would be like the radical end of the spectrum. But hey. Um, everybody is entitled to their political leanings. And so, um, anyways, yeah. So yeah, it's, um, been so much fun. You guys, I'm so excited that some of you guys have joined and become members and everything. I hope you guys really do enjoy it. Um, I've got some new, um, I still have a vlog to finish up, but I'll probably go run and try to get some dinner here in a minute and then I'll come back and edit the video I did today. I need to do a video looking at the Swedish fashion from last week. And then, um, I want I need to do it best and we're stressless, but I may go ahead and like record that tomorrow. Um, so I can maybe work on it on the train going to, um, France. Although I will say I was kind of annoyed because Eurostar is supposed to have Wi-Fi, and the Wi-Fi was not working when I was driving, when we were on the speeding train, um, to the UK from, from France and everything. So Hopefully I'll get a time to work, although I do need research too. Oh my gosh, so many things, guys, so many things. Um, all right, and, oh, and Judith, thank you so much for the tip here as well. So I goes, hope you guys have a fantastic day. Enjoy the rest of your week. And I look forward to doing these next week. Next week, I will be back in the States. I will be stateside. And that will be very exciting in a way. And I'll like, oh, <laughs> recovering. Um, but hopefully I'll be recovering. And, and I hope, what's really nice is when I come back, I like wake up early in the morning and I can actually get things done in my day instead of like stretching things out. So I'm looking forward to being back with you guys next week. We should have a fantastic week. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you guys in again so soon. Bye.